Making Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality precision sewing machines, and by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more, and by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Launch, based here in Concho, Oklahoma. Uh, today we're going to go do a new set. Uh, we're going to do a set of dance bells. Now, as far as different categories, there's so many different categories. There's men's fancy, men's straight, uh, men's grass, and men's traditional. Uh, we're going to be focusing on a set of bells for the men's straight dance. This footage here was taken at Red Earth Annual Powell in Oklahoma City. Notice how the bells keep the dancers in time with the drum. This is very important when it comes to judging, because any overstepping can surely be heard. And today, I've got none other than my infamous brother, Red Sky Walk Paul. He's going to be doing all the total construction of these bells. Uh, he made his own bells like uh, for his uh, dance regalia. And so he's going to bring forth and show people out there you know, how to construct uh, traditional style of bells. Uh, these ones are different from the men's fancy. Men's fancy are a little bit different as far as weight difference. Uh, these ones are also louder, I, I would say, than compared to the men's fancy style. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to give you Red Sky Walk Paul. He's very single. Uh, all you women out there that are looking for somebody like this, if, if plump uh, makes you jump, let him know. If, you know, thickness is your sickness, he is your man. Um, Nonetheless, uh, Red Sky Walpaw, take it away. Show us what you're going to be working with today. All right, thank you, JR. Good to be here again. Glad to be here. And I got some leather here. I got some bells. These are some of the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a knife, probably some wire cutters, an awl, a safety knife, some needle nose pliers, and an X-Acto knife. And I've got a piece of leather here. I've dyed. Got one set already done, but with the magic of television, I'm going to show you how to make the rest. And what I did is I took this piece of leather and I cut it where it fit around my leg. And then I had, I'm going to use seven bells. And I didn't really get a tape measure out or anything to measure them. I just kind of eyeballed it because that's the way I like to roll. Because you get a tape measure out, things get complicated. <laughs> you want to keep it simple. Okay? Very, very simple. Very simple. Because if you keep it simple, then it's not that hard to mess up. So what I did is I kind of spaced them out, laid them up against the leather. I made sure that I had plenty of room so they could move around. Okay, like that. So once I got them all laid out, let's see, get some of this out of the way for now to show you. One now, at a time. when you measured them, you said you didn't use a measuring device. You know, you didn't use a ruler. Um, what was the best way you could gauge it? You know, between the bells. You know that you wanted to puncture the holes. For oh, I, I just went with like uh, I used my body for a measurement. I kind of went with like two fingers apart because that gives it plenty of room. Okay, so you know. Henceforth, you know, you don't actually have to use a measuring device like I do as far as, you know, like a ruler or whatnot. You know, sometimes you can, you know, be a little bit more creative and actually use like, you know, your two fingers and stuff. Um, it's just his style, you know, it's just funny. But uh, going forth, you know, um, what else are we going to be doing? We're going to actually be cutting this into the leather. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Safety first. You know, you got to be safety conscious. I took a piece right here, the tab that's going to go in. And I put my, uh, whoa, that's pretty good. See, that's safety, <laughs> top-notch materials here. But that happens. So before this, though, let me step back. Um, you actually dyed this. And I think on our previous show, when I did uh, the belt, uh, we used the exact same dye, which is uh, a Marine Corps black. And, you know, well, of course, you know, it's just an easy, very easy uh, leather dye that you just uh, uh, ran over one coat and then kind of buffed it out and get all the excess off. Because, you know, if you don't get all the excess off, it actually rolls onto your fingers and can turn your fingers black. Um, so that's how we got it black. So that's we first dyed it. And then um, after, well, first uh, we cut it out and then we dyed it. And now he's puncturing the holes for actually the bells to fit in. Now, I know from making bells, Sometimes uh, on one fancy it's bells, I use uh, actually like a shoestring to actually connect all the bells together. Or I've seen people actually use zip ties. You, on the other hand, are actually going to use a wire. And I, I believe that's for durability, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the metal on the inside, inside of the bell will cut through the shoestring. It'll cut through a zip tie. Okay. Okay. And the metal, it'll take it a lot longer for it to cut through. So you don't have to run around and replace them. Okay. I'll put a 15-year guarantee warranty on these right here because the last set of bells I made was about 17 years ago and they're still good. So what I did is I just put it up against there 
I figured out this much, and I moved, removed that, and I cut a little rectangle. You have to be very careful, and you want to use this so you don't cut through your tablecloth. Fingers. You know, yeah, well, that's going to happen sometimes. But I made a little line mm -hmm. right here, cut this way, then I cut back on this side, tried to weasel it through there, and I pushed it through. Now, it's going to be kind of tight on the way through there. Uh -huh. And once I got it through, I took the other safety knife and I cut the excess around there to get it more flush because, you know, you'll have little pieces of leather sticking up. And I cut it up against this part. And remember, always cut away from your body if you can. So I hold it on this side and cut that way and cut this way, back the other way. So henceforth, we got to be very careful using these knives because the knives that we're working with are very sharp. Now, knowing that, you know, I kind of know a little bit of the history of the bells, and from what I remember is that, like a long time ago, uh, they were constructed from actually deer, deer toes, and what they would do is they would actually place them close together, uh, one uh, hoof next to the other hoof, and uh, they would actually make a clanking, rattling sound. And from the story that I was told a long time ago is that uh, they would actually wear these, and it was a kind of deterrent. You know, if they were coming up on an enemy tribe or someone that, you know, they, they you know, was an enemy, uh, the, the sound that it would make would actually deter other people because it actually sounded like, so, like there was actually more than one person. Um, later on, when they began trading with, uh, later, uh, with metal, you know, it became, um, uh, bells actually came out and felt. And after a while, natives started to put them on their uh, regalia. And so that, that's the story. I believe that, you know, from what I've heard is that's the way how we got to dance bells. Now, today in the uh, competition wor uh, world, uh, dance bells are utilized for dancing competitions. And, you know, you can actually hear people overstep or understep just by the means of their bells. So that's kind of where it's, it's evolved into now. So it's kind of into the competition uh, world of dance. Uh, what kind of story did you hear about, like uh, the originality of bells? Well, I've heard a few different stories, you know, and one that kind of made me chuckle around, laugh a little bit, is that one of the dancers, he was a fancy dancer, I believe, he had his heart <laughs> broken, and uh, to emulate the sound of his broken heart, he put on some bells, and his buddies, they wanted to support him, so they wore bells too. So I don't know, you got all these different stories where origin stuff begins, but I'll tell you this, I got these bells from a trading stand or direct from the old country of India. Mm -hmm. Their brass sleigh bells are about $4, $5 a piece. So you're looking, you know, if you want good bells, you're going to spend about anywhere from 50 to to uh, $100 a leg, per yeah. leg. So um, and, and that's one thing, you know, once you, well, I kind of I emphasized last time, is if you're going to make regalia, it is a little bit of cost, you know, I, but you want to get good quality. You don't want to skimp, you know, but it's an investment because, you know, the, the amount of money that you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And the more, you know, like you want stuff that's going to be durable. Of course, the more durable products are going to be a little bit more expensive. I have seen out there like cheaper de uh, bells and stuff. And, you know, like I, I guess you would call it the dinger inside of it sometimes gives out. Um, I've seen some dancers modify this by actually putting wire in there and put like a... Um, uh, a, a mechanical nut in there and that way you know it would actually rattle on the sides and stuff. Um, so I have seen people augment these styles of bells. These ones in, are, are different because they're actually fortified and uh, the I guess you would say what are the dinger is <laughs> encased inside. But you know like I said you know it, 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 it's worth it to actually spend a little bit more money to actually pay for like a better product. So Exactly I mean if you're gonna get out of it what you put into it so don't be afraid to get the top-notch stuff and put it together yourself that way you know what you're doing you don't have to this is what the show is about we're trying to show people how to create their own stuff and you know and if you want to you can make a set of bells maybe you could take them to the powwow or whatever and maybe sell them to somebody take orders you know put a little bit of change in your pocket however you want to do it but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start weaving this through here so we get one piece, push it through. Okay, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, once again, you gotta be very careful. You don't want to cut your fingers. You know, you can cut a finger right off. If but you yeah, if you if you do happen to cut yourself, that's okay. A little bit of blood, you know, you put it back into, you know, it becomes part of you. Actually, kind of, you know, the idea of see like that. I just stabbed myself <laughs> in the finger, but that's all right. So I'm just gonna repeat the process through here. And how many times do you think you've cut your hands today? Probably at least 20. Yeah. Red Scott, my brother, you know, he's, you know, he's very strong, you know, he's like, he endures pain like crazy, but, you know, he's used to cutting his hands. 
He uses bacon for like a band aid. That's how greasy it <laughs> is. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but yeah, we're, see, that's all I'm doing right here. I put one through there, and the next, the next little slot, thread it through there. Now, I've got a question. You know, I, I see that, you know, like uh, w the way we attach the bells was we utilize a wire. Um, just like uh, going through it, like uh, uh, what kind of wire did we actually use? Well, went to the closet, found a regular coat uh, wire hanger. So you're coming out of the closet. Actually, it was your closet we got the wire from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate real fast. I mean, you can just give a little snip here. Now, once again, you've got to be very careful because you don't want to poke yourself with the wire. It's kind of loud. And then what I did is I took the pliers and I just kind of... And first off, you just want to bend it straight out to like a straight length, right? Yes, yes. Straight, okay. as, straight as possible. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but just to know. And what kind of like, if say if you were actually going to select a, like a hanger, what kind of hanger are you looking for? I'd look for like a real nice heavy gauge wire uh, hanger, maybe a brass hanger if you can, but these will work just fine. I mean, you take your stuff to the dry cleaners and you get a free hanger out of it, really. Yeah, so. and I've, I've used wires before. Some of the ones I use for making bustles as far as backboards, uh, there's always places like, you know, Home Depot, you can actually go into the aluminum department and they'll have like rods uh, available. Uh, you can buy them there. You know, this one is like a little bit more cost efficient, so you can actually do this. Uh, I know the ones at Home Depot are going to run like, you know, $3 or, you know, depending on what kind of metal it is. Um, this one will save you a little bit of cash, um, you know, as far as using the brass hangers. So that's just, I, I know that that's, I used those for backboards before, so. I would use this for like making s'mores, but mm -hmm. I know JR would use these for making hot dogs. Mm -hmm. He likes hot dogs <laughs> over open flame. And another thing, you wanna have a surface, I wanna make some holes. You wanna make some holes for the strings to go through. You use your awl and push through there. Be very careful, you don't have your finger over there and you're gonna poke through, and, you know, puncture yourself. You know, have to, you just have to be very careful. You know, make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, working with leather, it is a little tough because, you, know, um, you know, you always have knives and you have awls and stuff like that. Um, your hands kind of do kind of a little, like, uh, kind of, like, jacked up. I remember working with my stuff, you know. Uh, you know, I have cut my hands before, but, you know, just got to be careful. And if you have any, like, broken tools or broken blades, you want to go ahead and replace that because that's just asking for it, really. If you have a, a broken... Um, if it's not sharp, your, your blades are getting dull, go ahead and replace them because uh, nothing cuts worse than a dull knife. A sharp knife really won't cut you so much as a dull one. I think that was one of y'all's chiefs, too, the old chief dull knife. Mm. Yeah. But you have to be very careful. So what we're doing through is actually taking the straight edge, uh, like, uh, wire, piercing through and, uh, like, the actual, like, eyelets of the bell, and that way it, everything is actually linked up, so... It's gonna be a solid construction here. It's just you have to. It's just a little time consuming because you know I'm, I really don't want to. Now, lose. also with the wire, I know you know since it is metal, uh, you can actually shape it. So one thing is it will keep the shape. So when it wraps around your leg, um, you know you don't have to worry about it being straight out. And um, you just gotta be real careful about bending the very ends in because if you if you say if you bent it the wrong way it, it can actually jab you like actually uh, when you put the on your leg so just be real careful with that um, but you know that's one good thing about the wire it's going to keep a shape to it so and it will last for a long time a lot longer than uh, say your relationships or whatever you got going on <laughs> but you know it just takes a little bit of time you be very careful you don't want to hurt yourself you know what I mean so careful. usually when you thread it through, are you just wiggling it back and forth, or are you, yeah. or are you twisting it? it it'll, it'll just, I'm just trying to find a way to snake it through the hole. You see, it's kind of got its own idea of what it wants to do. So going back to your set of bells, how long do you think you've, you've had your, your original set? Oh, the ones I'm using currently, I've had them about 17 years. Uh, one of my real good friends, Tate Honadig, he helped me construct my last set of bells. And he's from the Colorado in River Indian tribes. He's a critter. So, hey, Tate, <laughs> hope you're doing all right out there. 
Yeah, and I know, you know, like, uh, my style of dance, the men's fancy dance, is a little bit different. You know, I, I use, like, the square bells, uh, which, you know, we talked about actually has, like, a little dinger in it. And, uh, you know, I usually, sometimes, you know, they wear out, and usually what I'll do is I'll just throw them away. But, you know, what I, the way I back them is I just use a, a shoestring, and I kind of tape the shoestring to give it a little bit of density, and then pull it through the eyelets, and that's the way it gives a little stiffness. So that's what I use, so... Uh, I don't really have to make them as heavy duty as a straight dance, but you know, one thing about this, it actually looks good. You know, it looks more traditional. <laughs> That'll happen. Uh, one thing you can do with the nickel plated bells, the silver round bells, you can get you an old coffee can, a little bit of gas or some diesel, and you could take them outside, of course, and you burn them for about five, five minutes or so, they'll get black. You, you uh, take them out of the coffee can, wipe them off. Something about the heat thins out the, uh, the metal makes it lighter and it makes it louder for the round uh, silver shaped, uh, silver, silver colored sleigh bells. But I don't know if you can do that with these brass bells because they're loud enough already. So. Yeah. Now also with brass like this, you know, you, you probably use like never doll to kind of shine them up and stuff. Oh yeah, you can go to like say your auto, auto parts store if you have one nearby or whatever. Uh, I like to use the Mothers or there's a, a one called Blue Magic. Oh yeah. And it's, it's just real simple, you just shine them up and you wipe it off. Uh, just follow the instructions on the, on the jar. And just keep your stuff shiny if you want to. I like getting the uh, weathered look on there. Kind of make it look older. I think it's just lazy, but yeah, all right. <laughs> that, that's true. I am lazy a little bit sometimes. <laughs> this is everybody. It just takes a little bit of effort, though. See? Just kind of snake it through there like a kind of... Now going through, I've also seen um, other styles of straight dance. Uh, sometimes they may have like uh, another row of bells. Have you seen that too? Yeah, I, I have uh, two rows. I got a total of 16 bells on uh, each leg. And this is a single row of seven. So they'll, they'll be pretty loud, but they'll be kind of light. I mean, I'm, I'm a heavy duty guy, so I like using the heavy duty stuff. So mm. 16 bells, that's just about right for me. Yeah. Little guys like you, you know, you guys use those little girl bells. That's all right. Fancy dancers, you know, I mean, you can see 10, 15 fancy dancers out there and only hear about four sets of bells. I think that's so they don't, over, when they overstep, you can't tell. <laughs> it's one of their trade secrets, I'd imagine. Right. <laughs> we should have brought some of your bells. We should have, but we didn't. Yeah, I think you left them on purpose. I did. Because they're not that loud. Well, well these bells, I didn't want everybody out there to know that, like, all my dingers and my bells are gone, so, you know. Uh, well, we know that already. Yeah. And now we're at almost to the conclusion of our bells. Uh, all we're going to do is wrap this up. Uh, Red Sky is going to show you actually how to uh, bend the end of the coupling. So, like, uh, you don't want to, when you bend it, you want to be very careful that you don't want to point uh, the, the actual wire this way, actually, because, you know, you will be poking into yourself as soon as you put it on. We want to bend it around. That way, you know, it won't be seen and actually, um, you know, you just, kind of just don't want to actually jab yourself. So he's going to demonstrate on actually how to uh, bend it perfectly and safely. I'm sorry, I should say. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of the excess off, not too much, I still have to, so I could work with it. You got to be careful with these tools now, especially if your kids are at home. Be careful, you don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. So I do get the needle nose. Uh-huh. And what you're doing is bending at a C, right? Yeah, I'm trying to just lock it in there real good here. Man, someone needs to work out. That's fine right there. And what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now he's got it at a C, and what are you gonna pull a little bit tighter? Uh, it's, or are you just gonna it's, leave it like it's that? locked in right there. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then sometimes you don't need the tools. Let's see, you just wanna bend it straight, so. Yeah, it's, it's coming along. Hang on there. So like I said, you, know, you got to be very careful using these tools. As you can see, Red Sky's already cut up his hands a little bit. Um, he doesn't like to use uh, Band-Aids. He likes to use electric tape. Because it's on hand. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Let's go like that. And that yeah. and it matches. And now we'll cut right here. Watch out now. Boy, that's stout. Mm. 
So, so close. close, so close. Oh. So you gotta use two of them. Okay, and then it will bend the form around your leg. And so, from uh, what you want to do is like, from what we're going to do here, is the way we're going to fasten these bells, uh, when you actually put them on your leg, uh, he's going to uh, run a shoestring through it. And there's going to be two holes on both sides, so that way you can interlace it and then um, uh, actually stitch it together, right? Yes. Okay. Kind of like a, make a little X through there, whatever. I just run right here, two through there. I get this one, and I'll put it through the opposite side. If I made it, let's see, go back to the all a little bit more. So now, um, going with this, uh, to get these products, you know, um, as far as leather, um, you can always go find them at uh, Tandy's, and would you say you got these bells from uh, India? Yeah, well, that's what the uh, sticker said on it, made in India, but I got these from uh, Dancing Bear Supplies over in uh, California. I was out there in Cali, so I picked them up over there. Oh, all right, yeah. And, you know, I've seen different places, different websites that you can actually get these from, so, um, you Crazy know. Crow. Yeah, Crazy Crow. Um, there's some places up in, uh, what is it, Sky Took Oklahoma, too. There's a uh, store over there. Um, that, you know, you can always look for different styles of bells, too, you know, men's fancy dance or the square to the round, uh, these ones, too. And don't forget Red Eye Supply. They're out of Canada. They got a lot of good stuff for our brothers and sisters up there in Canada. Check out Red Eye Supply. This will go around your leg, tie it up, and you're ready to rock. Mm. So don't forget, you have to put your tools up when you're done, too. So now we got our final product. You know, we have our dance bells for our uh, straight dance outfit. You know, uh, perfectly, they'll bend perfectly around your leg. Uh, you know, these are a little heavier bells. And I know from, you know, when we first started talking about this, uh, the original bells were actually deer hooves, you know, like put close together, uh, giving that kind of a rattling shake sound to it. Um, now, where can you get stuff like that? You know, it's like, I know, of course, you have to go hunting or there's other aspects on how you can pick those up. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're uh, if you're not a hunter, you don't know anybody that does any deer hunting. You could go to, you could check out certain vendors. You could check online, uh, but some some people they take their deer to get processed at a, a check station. And if you talk to the guys that work there, they, you might be able to work something out with them, like because they're just going to cut the hooves off and throw them away. You might be able to work something out, like say, hey, I'll give you fifty cents for. Uh, no, you know, four pair or whatever. How, you know, you just have to talk with people, get to know um, people that work there at the processing place. And or uh, you can take your hatchet down I-40, and I know there's a bunch of deer down there. Every every other night, you just take your hatchet and get to the deer um, before, like, police officers get you. So that's the other aspect you can get. Yeah, because with, with the deer toes, it's, it's a little process. If you're going to cut them off yourself, you have to, um, it's, it's a, you have to do it outside because you can boil them to get them to come off. And if you boil them inside the house, something about the deer hooves is kind of toxic. It's, it's not a good idea. So it's always better to go ahead, if you can, just to buy them uh, already off and dried. So you just have to drill a hole. I'll come back and show you guys how to do that another time. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a good segment. We're going to do like another segment of doing actually a deer hoof like uh, bells. Um, you know, I've actually seen them before. Uh, um, I've seen a long time ago. I haven't seen it in a long time, but uh, I've seen actually someone that had a, um, a gourd dance, uh, a gourd with actually deer hooves on there, which uh, to me I was kind of in awe because that was awesome. I'd never seen that, you know, because most of the uh, gourds are actually made of. Uh, uh, was it a uh, gourd? Yeah, yeah a gourd. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, what they put inside there? I couldn't even tell you, man. Yeah, BBs know. and stuff like that. So on our Facebook, we've got a question that came in from Felicia. Uh, she wants to know what kind of sewing machine to start out with to do applique, and also what kind of beads uh, and needles uh, to actually use. Um, well, Felicia, you know, I first started out with, uh, I believe, an old janky uh, Singer sewing machine. Uh, it worked pretty good, and then, you know, after a while, I started investing a little bit better with sewing machines. But uh, the ones that I currently do have uh, that I personally use, it's just an everyday run-of-the-mill, like, uh, household sewing machine. But mine is a uh, Janami. Uh, you know, it's very been good to me. You know, I, I like it. Um, uh, as far as cars, I would say I'd probably put over, like, you know, 300,000 miles on mine, and it's still ticking. Uh, so, I, you know, I kind of like that one. You know, it's, it's just been good to me, so that's why I kind of like that one. Um, 
Also, we have this one, which is way better than mine. This is a Bernina. Uh, you know, I've utilized this machine a couple of times, and this one is smooth. Uh, you know, if, if I had the money, it, it's just all about the investment of what you want to put into it. So, I would say when you first start out, you know, maybe just try it out and you get, it'll get you a, like a more, less than expensive one. And then when you start getting good at, you know, doing an applique, um, try to bump it up a little bit. Uh, it just all depends on what your preference is. Uh, the other question is like, uh, what size beads uh, did I use? Um, it depends on what kind of uh, medium if I'm working on. You know, if it's a small piece or a big piece. Um, if I'm trying to take up a lot of space, I use the, uh, the bigger size beads. Uh, but I correlate that with the size needles. Uh, any place that you usually buy beads from and needles, uh, they'll, they'll walk you through which uh, needles are good for which beads. Um, so say if you're using like a big space, usually like 11 or like 10 size beads, um, my fully out, uh, beaded outfit that I, I personally have, I, I believe I, I used uh, size 10 beads. Uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning in to Making Regalia. Uh, we're going to bring you more shows uh, here. Um, this new season, I'm going to be uh, doing bustle work. Uh, I'm going to do a traditional ba uh, dance bustle, uh, chicken dance bustle, and later on, maybe we're going to do some fancy dance bustles. And of course, we're going to do uh, get back on the sewing machine. Uh, I want to thank uh, Bernina of Oklahoma City once again for donating uh, this sewing machine. Uh, you know, I'm still going to take this one home if I can, uh, maybe after the show. I also want to thank First Nations Experience uh, out of San Bernardino, California for rebroadcasting our show um, to all our U.S. affiliates out there. I appreciate it. You know, we got a lot of good response and that, uh, every comment that uh, we've gotten has always been uplifting and, you know, like uh, uh, positive towards the show. And, of course, we want to bring more shows too. Uh, along with Powells.com, thank you again for rebroadcasting our show. So if you want to check us out on Facebook, you know, uh, please, you know, like our page. Uh, send us some comments, you know, like uh, the shows that you might want to see or even questions that you know we have from the past episodes that we have um, you know like uh, I know um, we're still on uh, Vimeo and uh, YouTube for all our past episodes thank you very much once again uh, for tuning in uh, with me my brother uh, Red Sky Wapapaw and um, here in Concho Oklahoma wants to thank you once again uh, watching Making Regalia wear your seatbelts Making Regalia is made possible in part by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. War Child Society, more savage than average. Visit warchildsociety.com to learn more.